Today is the day, Daffodil. I'm really not sure about this, but I think it is the right thing to do. Especially because it means we'll be able to have more time to go ahead and work with the other spirits at helping them find a happy end to their afterlife. And it sounds like speaking of happy end to the afterlife, some of the food that I was cooking is already done. All right, let's come and check on what it is. All right, green salad. And then let's go ahead and actually get a little bit more cooking done while I'm at it. Let's try a couple of the tea leaves in order to make some fresh tea. I wonder if Gustav might enjoy a cup of fresh tea. There we go. Oh. And then let's come on down. Good morning, honeybee. Good morning, Summer. And let's actually water the plants really quickly if I can. And then I want to settle in and I actually want to see if we can play there. A little bit of Plantasia Fantasia with Summer because my friends, I think it's time. It's finally time to say goodbye to our beloved Summer. And I thought about it really carefully. I reflected for a long time and she is so tied into the cycle of life. And I really want to give her the opportunity to be able to, to be part of that and to not hold her back from going on if she's ready. Here are some field seeds I brought for you. Thank you, Summer. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're actually going to change into our classic outfit because I think it's appropriate to be in greens and summery colors for this. But let's do this. We're going to head over in this direction. We're going to go through the storm. And we're going to find our way to the Everdor today. Summer's story has been a really beautiful one that has been full of music and self-reflection. Summer has spent a lot of time trying to understand her place in the world and trying to, to make up for some things that she feels were big mistakes. She destroyed some of the environment and now she wants to go ahead and fix it. Sprout! Lightning? A storm! Let's try and catch some lightning! What do you say? No, not this time, not this time. We're gonna go ahead and keep moving through the storm. And we're going to give Summer the ending that she's searching for. Her story? She was in love with her Aunt Rose. She used to work for a company that had her using a whole bunch of chemicals and altering the landscape just to exploit it and try to get as much profitability as it, she could out of it, even though it was destroying the land and making it so that all of the creatures around it, all of the plants actually began to become more unhealthy. Basically, to exploit something is to really push it beyond what it can offer you beyond what what really its nature intended you can you cannot ask a tree to build 80 houses for instance and summer used to do that and then she found a way to actually live at peace with nature and was overwhelmed by its beauty and overwhelmed by the the sense of being part of the natural cycle that our, our aunt rose apparently was oh summer I'm gonna miss you, Summer. But this is all part of finding that step into the natural cycle, isn't it? Oh. Stella. Are you ready to go? Thank you. Oof. Oof. Really, I admire Summer a lot for this. To be able to have a sense of your place in your life compared to the gigantic ecosystem of everything else. I feel like out of everyone, Summer really has... Oh, look at everyone coming to say goodbye to her. Summer really spent 
her whole life thinking about what it was like to have her place and thinking about what it was like to be part of the cycle of life. What was she taking? What was she giving? Not a lot of people ask themselves to really consider those things. So, Summer, for you, everyone's here to say goodbye. And I really admire you. Let's do this. To be able to understand the place we have in the world is very difficult. It requires a lot of introspection. And a lot of courage to be able to hold the duality of how small and how magnificent we all are at the same time. I really thought I could keep up with it this time. The dragon. I was certain it was calming down. I could feel it purring, the warmth of it in my chest. I guess I did it all over again. Just like my father. The dragon is a beast. Indomitable, if I recall my own words correctly. Whether you choose to care for it, or to beat it down. Oh, what would Rose think of me? Would she be proud? Would she be ashamed? I can't help but wonder what she would have done in my stead. But I know. I know what she would have told me. She would have looked me straight in the eye. Her gaze would have pierced through the veil of my appearance. She wouldn't have said a word. She knew from the beginning. She knew the dragon would take me away. She knew I would have tried to love it and not hate it. Would she have judged me for my failure? I couldn't love it, Stella. I just couldn't. What was the dragon within me? As much as I hate it, it's part of me now. It will be forever. It was a depression, my dear Summer. If I want to leave gracefully, I must accept it for what it is now. I was looking forward to so many more lessons with you. Oh, Summer. You have been such a gifted, a gifted student, Stella. I am so proud of you. So proud of your heart. So proud of your blossoming soul. I'm sorry to leave you. You'll have to learn by yourself. I have no doubt that you'll pull through. The one lesson I have left is to show you what we're made of. Of a ethereal, ethereal starlight. We are but a few particles of thought in the vast stream of consciousness. That's what I mean, Summer. You had that ability to acknowledge how small and how great we are, all of us at the same time. This is the last thing I can teach you, Stella. That all things change, that all things end. And oh, how I hope to celebrate, cherish, and feel the joy of the moments while they last. I'm so proud of you, Stella. And I know Rose would be too. Thank you for everything. You have your own journey to go on. Even though you think you can teach me a lot, I... This is good. There would always be more to learn. But someone shouldn't hold their life back. They should focus on being their fullest selves, too. Thank you. <sighs> I am gonna miss summer. Oh look. 
are these daisies? But at the same time, this is beautiful, and and I, I really, truly feel we've done the right thing. All right. All right. Well, the next place we're actually going to take ourselves is over to Nordwheeler with Alice, who wants a little bit of adventure and excitement in a life, or an afterlife, I should say, of having spent so much of her time caring for others. So we're gonna go ahead and go there next, my friends, but I really hope Summer's story meant something to you. I think I just saw so much of my own passions ignited in what she loved in plants and in trying to really understand the the ecosystem, not only of the, the, the plants and animals she worked with, but a more emotional ecosystem about seeing the fullness of where you come from and who you are and who you could be. And a lot of people are really scared of that. But I hope I can meet... <laughs> Hello, Alex, you goof. I don't think that you're scared about being yourself. All right, let's see. There's Nordweller, so we want to come over here. <laughs> he is a goofball. All right, thank you, Alex. I just hope I can always meet the truth of how big and how little my life is, the duality of that, with as much grace as Summer has. I used- I always actually have found that such a romantic idea because my father, he really got me into space and into astronomy from a very early age. <laughs> Alex, you're such a goofball. I'm trying to have a serious moment here. All right, let's go ahead and head this direction. And then we might go to sleep for the night if I can and allow our lovely Alice her adventure in the morning. Look at the spirit flowers shining through. I am gonna miss them so much. And we finally have enough pears to be able to plant my peaches, which makes me very happy. But yes, I've always been fascinated by the stars, and the older I got and the more I began to realize the significance of them, how many there are, and what that implies about how big the universe was. For me, sometimes for a little bit when I was younger, that would lead me to panic. Like, what's the point? What's the point? If this is how it is, then how am I supposed to have any significance? And then as I got older and began to experience more things, I really had a sense of, oh, I may be just a small moat in time. I may be just a little, like you can define everything about me in one five foot five woman. <laughs> and that's my entire existence. I can think about stars that are millions of miles away. I can be part of worlds upon worlds upon worlds of adventure buried in layers of my imagination. And everything that I am is summed up in the body that I have. And that is a really small feeling sometimes, but, but I always have found it after I got over the fear, something ridiculously beautiful. The quote, we contain multitudes, means a lot to me. But all right, let's actually go ahead and we're going to try to sleep. I want a nice sunny morning where we can go ahead and go with Alice onto the shore. And we'll see what kind of adventures, what kind of stories Alice might begin to tell us too. But let me know, you guys. Have you ever thought about that? Your place in the ecosystem, not only of, of the physical ecosystem, but also the ecosystem of time, of awareness, of just how big the cosmic ecosystem even. On a scale that is that big, when you're really dealing with things that are like cosmetically large, entire entire galaxies, the entire universe, maybe significance there is less about how much you do and how much you find, and significance on that scale has more to do with how much you're aware of. How much you can dream about what else lies beyond. Maybe that's what it's all about. 
All right, Alice is up, and I think that she's going to be ready for our adventure. Yeah, maybe it has less to do with building empires that span the stars, and it has more to do with just being aware of what the significance of the stars being out there and existing means. I have a lot more thinking to do. Good morning! Good morning, Alice! Would you happen to have anything to eat? Of course, I made some poached fruit just for you. Oh, you already had the poached fruit recently. Oh, I do need to make her favorite meal. I just don't know what it is yet. Um, bisque. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, you don't do stimulants. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, no stimulants. So let's have some rice pudding. Just something nice and warm to tide you over. A nice hug for Alice. I could definitely use a nice grandmotherly hug. So she dislikes stimulants. She likes old-fashioned food and desserts. But we still haven't found her favorite food. How I am hoping I will be able to build her something nice. How invigorating. Oh, Stella, thank you so much for bringing me here. Oh, smell the crisp winter air. And these colors. Why, I feel like a young girl again. Oh, let's go already. I can't wait to see all the sights. How cute. All right, we'll follow her along in just a second. Let's see, pear seeds, cabbage seeds. I'll grab a cabbage and a celery seed. But otherwise, I think we're good. Look at that. Is that an ancient wooden elevator cage? What a wonderful construction. I didn't think I'd ever see one with my own eyes. Remember? It is by climbing one of these that Ansgar managed to get away from Harold's gang. A treacherous and icy cage that's claimed many a daredevil's young a young daredevil's life. But of course, Ansgar managed to escape with the Countess's sapphires with ease and grace. Yes, he was quite the cat burglar. <laughs> Her little books she loves. Oh, look at me. I'm swooning just thinking about it. As for us, I think we should just climb the ladder. Watch out for ice patches. Oh, she is so precious. <laughs> All right, you guys. We're going to go ahead and continue on with our big adventure with Alice next time. Oh, good day, sir. Oh, she's so precious. And we're going to try to think about white leaves. Oh, she's adorable. About what Summer's story may have left behind for us. I know I'm going to be looking at the stars tonight and thinking about how to value what's important right now. Instead of all the things we can artificially build ourselves up to thinking are the important things. I think if I look at the stars, I really know what they are. I'm gonna go hug my husband. But all right, if you guys could do please leave a like for summer. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.